So I'd like to welcome Mario Ballaro from the University of Fluminense in Brazil. Um, he's going to give us a talk on ultrasound findings of common pathologies of the female genital tract of small ruminants. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty glad, glad to be here today, and I would like to start my presentation with a special thanks to the scientific committee for the, this opportunity to present our work in Brazil. So, our RENS, uh, this study reports the prevalence and ultrasound appearance of some common reproductive tract pathologies in small ruminants, female small ruminants, under tropical conditions in Brazil. We performed this study uh, between September of uh, 2012 and September uh, 2015 at Rio de Janeiro State, and we normally uh, did these things in the pregnancy diagnostic routine and, after, and before and after breeding season. A total of eight sheep flock and four dairy goat flock were used in this study. We used the ultrasound device, Sonescape S6 VET, with B mode and color dope mode, uh, accoupled with a linear uh, probe uh, by transrectal way and a convex transduction by transabdominal way. And we used the C square to analyze the, uh, the frequency data. Going to our results, we performed a total of uh, 1,453 ultrasound assessments, and 60% of, uh, of those in sheep and 40% in goats. And we found a total of 10% of pathologies in these animals, and sheep had uh, significant, significantly lower um, reproductive disorders than goats. So we found around 50%. 5% in sheep and 50% in goats. Uh, going to the sheep, we found uh, more than 60% uh, of the finds were accepting uh, embryonic fetal loss of pregnancy, following by hydrometria, cystal and cystic endometrial hyperplasia, follicular cyst, septic embryonic fetal loss of pregnancy, pyometra, ovarian tumor, and macerated fetus. Regarding goat species, we find more than 50% uh, uh, of hydrometer cases, following by a septal embryon embryonic fetal loss of pregnancy, cyst cystic endometrial hyperplasia, follicular cyst, hydrosol pinch, pyometra, mummified fetus, luteal cyst, cervicides, retinal placenta, and at the end, super cervical abscess. Going to the good place, good time of this representation is to show the tapes, the videos. Let's start with a goat with an uh, early hydrometrum. Oops. Hey, we have a problem here. <laughs> I think that the person put the old one because I, you have a, another one. Ah, thank you very much. So, <laughs> in this case, yes, thanks God. <laughs> uh, in this case, we have a uh, uterus segment with a collection, uh, collection of fluid inside and over here and the fluid, an echoic fluid flow collection into the uterus, yeah, here the bladder. And uh, in this time, it's important to highlight that we have to differentiate the history of these animals, it's a, because it could be an early pregnancy, but it is animals not uh, bred with a haram, maybe it's a hydrometer. Go to the, uh, oh, uh, next one, please, if you can, someone pass. <laughs> So now we have a late hydrometer case, so we can find a lot of uh, fluid, anechoic fluid collection into the uterus and uh, the uterine wall with this tra trabecular formation. So it's a, lo a lot of fluid collection without the appearance of the ferrous or placentomas. It's just fluid, it's just liquid. This is the gross, um, gross appearance. So we have here a uh, uterus with hydrometer and the left side and the right side are normal one. You, so you can see the huge difference. And a lady with a uh, hydrometer problem before the treatment and after prostaglandin treatments. Uh, this is a normal one. This is not Photoshop, it's the same animal, believe me. <laughs> now we will see the uh, goat with uh, unilateral Hydrosol pinch, please, you can pass. So now we can see the uterine segments. It's okay without uh, fluid. And this cyst, uh, let's see again. Sorry. You can pass again for me, please. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, close to the ovary, we can see this fluid collection. It's really close to the ovary. And here we have a cell. And this is uh, your gross appearance of a hydrosol pinch. So the uterus is OK. And the hydrosol pins here close to the ovary. Now we will see uh, you with an early cystic endometrial hyperplasia. The bladder is here. The uterus segments. And you can see some little cysts into the endometrium. So you can see clearly this kind of image. And we will go when you go to the advanced case, you can see this one image, please. The bladder. And the uterus lost all the, or, uh, its anatomy, and we have a lot of cysts into the endometrium. So this kind of um, sponge or spider web pattern. So it is a, a gross finding. Some cysts into the endometrium and advanced case with a lot of cysts in the endometrium. Now we go to the differentiate the follicular cysts and the luteal cysts. And you can use the Doppler mode. It's really helpful to differentiate uh, both. So you can start. Uh, in the case of follicular cyst, please. We see that the follicular wall is avascularization. We don't have vascularization in the follicular wall. And in the case of the luteal cyst, usually we find uh, vascularization in the follicular wall. So it's really different, and Doppler can help us to identify. So we have here the gross appearance of a follicular cyst. The luteal, wall, luteal one has more yellow or pallid appearance. That's an image that I, I really like it. It's an uh, ovary tumor, and you can see that this ovary loses all the, uh, its anatomy and the heterogeneous pattern and some parts of uh, vascularization and also some cysts, too. You can go. Just to see the video tape. So it's, <coughs> it's easily to identify this tumor. In the case, this was uh, by histopathologic, histopathologic find. It's a, hist a cyst adenoma tumor. So the gross appearance, the, the ovary with effect by the tumor, and the normal one. Now going to the embryos, bed, embryos loose. We have in the, uh, the first video, please. When the B mode, normally we can see the absence of hurt beat. So the, the animals here, thoracic wall, and without hurt beat. And the next one, colors can be helpful too. When you see the, uh, the fetus without vascularization inside, so you can use these two together. And the last one, when you have the uh, absorption of the content in the uterus. So you have this appearance, but it's important to highlight here the anechoic fluid formation without a septic involvement. So going to a septic loss of the pregnancy, you can see a different uh, pattern a lot of fluid collection and more ac uh, echogenic and heterogenic and the fetus here, that. And this other one, you can pass, is a pyometra in advanced case. This is a placentomas, calcificate, calcificate placentomas. A lot of heterogenic fluid collection uh, and the mass here, part of the fetus. And when you open this uterus, it's just pus inside. As conclusion, goats had significantly more uh, reproductive tract disorders than sheep when uh, hydrometer was the major insurer, and the uterine sonography provides clinically useful information regarding the diagnosis, prognosis, and therapeutic. Uh, I'd like to thank you for everyone for attention, and now we can go to the answers. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so he was very good and kept to time, so um, there was uh, time for one question if anybody wants to ask one. No? Yes, oh. Dr. Angus. Angus Campbell. Uh, Angus Campbell from Melbourne, that was a great talk, Mario, well done. Um, I'm very interested that lots of your findings of embryonic loss were aseptic, whereas in Australia we would have thought that a major cause of pregnancy loss were infections. So do you have a comment about why you think, or are, are you confident that your, those uh, lost pregnancies were definitely aseptic and maybe 
just rather than being poorly identified on ultrasound as septic ones? That's a great point. Uh, now we are trying, uh, we are having done some studies to try and uh, find the correlation, the relationship between uh, early uh, pregnancy loss with the toxoplasma and some uh, agents that this, uh, can kill this embryo without a septic involvement, like you, say, you saw in the, the fluid collection. So in this case, we see that the fluid collection is anechoic, is clean, and we have an involvement of some bacteria like E. coli. You can find that pools and heterogen image. So we are trying to look for uh, some explanations uh, to try to differentiate that uh, aseptic loss of pregnancy uh, is from just physiologic uh, terms or congenic problems from uh, early loss by some agents like uh, protozoa or other agents. Thank you. That's great. Thank, Thank you again. Thank you.